Yes, there's a new iPad Air and an iPhone SE. That's all great. But give me the juicy details on the new Apple Silicon chip and the new computer. That'll make me the most fastest developer ever. And Apple listened and they delivered. The new chip is the M1 Ultra and the new computer is the Mac Studio. You probably heard this by now, which I've ordered by the way to be compared with other machines that I have here. Doing my regular battery of tests and developer related activities. So hit the like button if that's what you're into and consider subscribing so you don't miss my reviews and tests. Now about the M1 Ultra chip. You know how we had the M1 Max, which was the most powerful chip Apple has ever made. And that was only a few months ago. Well, imagine putting those two together, two of those together for a huge bump in performance and doubling the memory throughput to 800 gigabytes per second. Is that even possible? Now this thing is really big, right? Physically, so they couldn't fit it into a laptop. Sorry, MacBook Pro fans. You're stuck with a very slow M1 Max now. <laughs> uh, yes, this new chip is for desktops only for now, probably because it'll be too big and it'll get too hot for laptops, but it'll sit quite nicely in the new Mac Studio desktop that they've also announced. By the way, developers won't have to change any code to run on the new architecture. This is not really new architecture. It's the same architecture. Okay, it's the uh, ARM based architecture. These two silicon chips are connected with something called ultra fusion. So they're seen by the operating system and by the software as one unit, one chip. So you don't have to do any special programming for it. That's pretty clever. And this allows up to 2.5 terabytes per second bandwidth between the two chips using very little power. That's amazing. This little M1 Ultra chip is not so little anymore. It's grown up, it's big now. It's 114 billion transistors, and that's seven times more than the M1. Makes it eight times faster than the M1, according to their slides. Sorry, M1 MacBook Air. I still love you though. All right, some other goodies are incremental as a result of this design change. There's 20 core CPU, 16P and 4E. They don't call it performance and efficiency. They call it high performance and high efficiency, the marketing stuff there. But we refer to them as P and E cores now at this point. So 16P and 4E. There's a 64 core GPU on board too. So this is all on chip, on board inside the SOC or system on chip. By the way, if you're not familiar with this architecture of the SOC style of chip design, I'll link to a video down below that I did with Fireship on that channel. And that video goes into some of the details and explains that. And they also showed some more charts like this one, for example. Nice, less power usage than some other chip. <laughs> they do actually say the chip in very little font down below. This is an interesting chart right here. It shows, of course, that the GPU is more powerful while using less power. But if you zoom in, they're still comparing to the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti. It's not a slouch at all by GPU standards, but not exactly the most powerful or even close to the most powerful you can get on a PC right now. Also, by the way, notice that they're comparing to the Intel 12th generation i9 here with DDR5 RAM. Sorry, Intel, I know you tried really hard this year, but uh, maybe you can do better in Gen 13, yeah? Oh wait, that was the M1 Max performance. This next chart shows the M1 Ultra performance. And that's showing that it's better than the RTX 3090? Wow, I totally missed that. The, the slides went by so fast, but wow, 3090. That's the NVIDIA's fastest GPU. Now I plan to throw some machine learning tasks at it for my own comparisons on this channel. So we'll see about that. All right, so that was the M1 Ultra chip. Now what about the Mac Studio? That's the new little box that packs a crazy powerful punch. Did I just sound like an Apple marketer? I did, I, I guess. Now I gotta say, I, I wasn't excited about today's event before it started. You haven't seen too many posts here about it. As a side note, there's been a lot of rumors on other channels and as rumors go, they were pretty good this year. I gotta say, especially Luke Miani's channel, he actually nailed it. I don't like rumors and that's why you don't have rumors on this channel, but wow, well done. That was pretty close. So I wasn't that excited, but after seeing what was on offer today, I'm pretty stoked. Apple does a really good job with their presentations and drumming up excitement and they got me. They got me. I went ahead and ordered one. So this Mac Studio is a completely new design that can be configured either with an M1 Max chip 
or with the M1 Ultra chip, the new chip. But my favorite part about it is the I.O. There's a lot of I.O. on board. Yes, the latest crop of MacBook Pros have more I.O. than the previous crop, but I've been running into some issues myself. Uh, there's not enough of it. Even when the Thunderbolt dock that I've been using, it's still not enough. And I've been plugging things out and plugging things back in. There's gonna be four Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back of this thing. 10 gigabit ethernet, two USB 2 ports. They're not dead yet. I still use USB 2 devices and I have to adapt them. Now it's nice that I won't have to do that. And of course there's an HDMI jack and a pro audio jack for high impedance headphones. There's also two ports on the front. Now, if you get the M1 Ultra configuration, these two ports on the front are also Thunderbolt 4 ports. What? That's six, six Thunderbolt 4 ports. I wonder if any of them have to share buses. They probably do, right? They gotta. And these two ports on the front are only USB ports if your machine is configured with an M1 Max chip. So, a really nice lineup, and I'm really excited to get it in here and start testing. Hopefully that was a good summary for you. Again, appreciate a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.